we got a package. What's up guys and welcome back to Madman Music. Today, we're doing a little bit of an unboxing. We got something in the mail that I purchased. I've been actually eyeballing this thing for a while. I'm not even sure if it's worth the money. Who knows? But we're gonna find out. Because this thing, in my opinion, might just be the secret weapon. I don't know. Let's crack this guy open. So we're gonna take this like this and crack this thing open quickly. So excited. So excited. Lola's excited too. Okay. Yeah, so we might have we might have a dog in this video. But so let's open this guy. For safety purposes, you gotta close that. Oh, what is it? The little black box. It's a little tiny black box. It's ominous, really. I think, I feel like at, at any point, this might be a bad idea. If it comes in a little tiny black box, maybe it's not a good idea. I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't trust it. Uh, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna pop this guy open. We're gonna check out what's inside. Now, you probably already know from the video's description, I probably said something about what we're looking at, but I haven't I haven't looked at this. And this is actually an older model of this this thing, which is one I've been trying to get my hands on for a while. So I'm pretty pretty stoked about it. But let's uh, let's try to pop this guy open. All right. Oh, oh, here we go. Can we see it? Let's check this out. Boom. I don't have a clue how you say this. Moor? Mower? Moor? Moor? I don't know. Moor? Moorer? Moor. I feel like it says moor. I feel like it says moor. I don't know. Uh, it's a very strange word, but these moor pedals are really interesting because they're super cheap, super affordable. I shouldn't say cheap, but I should say affordable. They're very affordable. You can usually get them for like 50 bucks or so for one of these little tiny, as it says, micro pedals. Uh, a couple of years ago when these guys started popping out the micro pedal thing, they weren't the first because there's been plenty of pedal companies popping out micro pedals all over the place, but they certainly were very successful and influential enough that after they started doing it, basically everybody has a micro pedal of some sort. Now there's the mini Ibanez tube screamers. There's even like small power supplies that are the size of some of these micro pedals. There's a lot of really small stuff, which is really exciting because I mean, I love tiny gear. I love not, I love gear that is compact and portable enough that you can take it really easily somewhere. Now, you are sacrificing size for possibly quality and things of that nature, so it's good to experiment with this stuff and see what we can come up with. What can we take advantage of? What can we improve upon? How can we make something sound better? Which is exactly why I got this pedal. And what this pedal is, let's take this off, I'm really excited about this. Oh my god. This is the Moor 005, and it's a little preamp pedal. It's a little dusty, you can see. It wasn't wiped off before the guy sent it to me. This is a little preamp pedal. It's basically, this is basically an EVH in a pedal. Now, we've done another video like that before, where we talked about the MXR, right? The MXR EVH 5150 Overdrive, which I still want to do a lot more videos on because I think there's a lot of really interesting ways to use that, either in recording or making like a nice live rig that's really small. I want to get into some really portable rig stuff. I want to do videos about rigs soon, but I feel like no small rig video series is really complete without trying this little guy out, right? So they had some branding issues. You can see here that it's even got like the EVH stripes, you know? It's supposed to be like the white, the ivory EVH, you know? So it's essentially trying to be that. And I have I have never played one of these before, so I have no idea what it sounds like. Uh, but we're definitely gonna try this out. We're gonna mix it up with some stuff. It's actually got a channel, you can change the channel, and it's also got a cab IR built into it. Which of course, as we know, I just released the nasty cab IR. I will definitely be trying this mixed along with the Nasty Cab IR. That's just, I mean, you, duh. That's all we gotta say about that. So we're gonna go ahead and take this guy and we're gonna get it plugged up and we're gonna see what it sounds like. All 
All right, so now I've got this thing set up where it's basically running directly into the power section of the 5153. I'm really interested to hear the sound of this pedal. I have a few friends that use it on their like little tiny touring rigs, so I'm really interested to see how well it stands up when you do a direct comparison between the small, tiny, super affordable pedal or the actual, you know, $1,000 head. First of all, again, like I said, I'm running direct into the power amp, into the effects loop return of the 5150, and the cabinet is being mic'd with an SM57. This way we can hear both setups and really be able to tell the difference in the AB. This little pedal does have a cabinet IR built in which we will test when we do some more direct stuff into the computer, but for now, that thing is turned off. And if you're gonna use a pedal like this in this kind of scenario, be sure to turn off the cabinet emulator because it's just gonna make you sound like doo-doo. And nobody wants to sound like doo-doo. All right, so let's dive into a few of the features that are going on. First of all, right off the bat, from what I know, when you turn this thing on and off, it's basically activating the pedal on and off, which is pretty normal. Whenever you buy an effects pedal, the button will turn it on and off. If you hold the cab channel button, you'll see that it blinks. When it blinks, that means that you've initiated the cab IR, whereas now this should be off. There's another feature here that when you actually hold the actual stomp box button, you can set it so that instead of it turning the pedal on and off, it switches between these two channel modes that are on the actual pedal. Which is way more useful than just turning off the pedal entirely. So in this way, you're using it more like a foot switch for a real amp, which is kind of cool, especially considering this thing is incredibly affordable and super tiny on your pedal board. So let's hear this blue channel that's on this thing. It's not supposed to be like a crunch channel, like the blue channel on an EVH. So try not to get that confused. It should be more like a clean channel. So let's give that a listen. I think that sounds actually pretty good for, you know, a clean channel, but let's face it, you wouldn't buy this thing because of the clean channel. You're buying it because it's emulating the overdrive channel of a 5150. So let's crank this guy up and hear what it really sounds like. Holy cow, man, that sounds awesome. That is really convincing. I, my, my mind is blown. This sound, it's like so convincingly good for a little tiny pedal, right? I mean, you might expect this if you were playing, say, the MXR 5150 Overdrive pedal, which I'll link up above, but it this thing for this little tiny pedal, for this little tiny box, sounds awesome. Holy cow, dude, wow. Sounds great, dude. I, I, I'm blown away by the sound of this little thing. So let's go ahead and set this thing back up using the 5153 by itself and hear the difference. Convincingly good. This little guy, I, it, to my ears, of course I hear subtle differences. There's also some small differences in the actual way that the pedal is set up, but I feel like with some slight tweaking, you can really make this little guy incredibly convincing. Live, I feel like this thing would work really well, and then you kind of don't need to take this anywhere, as long as you get a comparable power amp that's gonna make it sound kind of nice. That'll be the next step. I'll have to get a hold of some power amps and try to see what we can do to make some really tiny rigs. Super excited about doing that. But let's head over to the computer, set it up there and hear what it sounds like direct. All right, so now we're set up directly into the computer going into my interface, 
guitar, pedal, interface, and I've turned on the cabinet simulator. You can tell by the fact that it blinks that the cabinet simulator is activated on the pedal. So the first thing we're gonna hear is what that sounds like with that built-in cab IR. So check it out. So in my opinion, the cab IR that's built in isn't the greatest sounding cab IR in the world. Will it make do? Of course. But the thing of it is, is that it, it's kind of muddy. Now we can probably go through and change some settings. Again, I've got this thing set up to match the settings that are on my EVH. But let's go ahead and see what happens when I tweak the, the presence a little bit because that does sound a little dark. <laughs> Again, I mean, I think it sounds okay. Doesn't sound as great as when it was running through the rig through a real power amp, but it's a little dark, but once you pump up the highs a little bit, it starts to sound a little bit better. Let's check this thing out using the Madman Music Nasty Cab IR. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and hold on this button here, and it will make that stop blinking, which gives us awesome tone. But let's go ahead and make sure that we are set up on the right cabinet. I am running Lancaster Audio's Pulse. I've talked about it in many videos. This is a free IR loader, LancasterAudio.com. Just download it, Pulse, it's free, get it, it's awesome. And I've loaded in the Madman Music Nasty Cab. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. I've set the parameters back to just about where they were when I had it on my main rig. So let's give it a try. This thing sounds great! When you're running it with like a, a legit cab IR, it sounds freaking awesome. Let's go ahead for the final test and just hear what the regular EVH sounds like in my normal recording rig so that we can A, B it to that basic sound. Because if you're gonna use this like this in this direct DI sort of situation, you definitely wanna use it with the cab simulator off. Use some Lancaster audio, it's free, go get it. And head over to the Madman Music merch store and pick yourself up the Madman Music Nasty Cab. It's 10 bucks, do that. Drop that thing in there and you're ready to go. It sounds awesome and punchy and I mean, it's less than 100 bucks. What? All right, so let's just hear what my regular recording rig sounds like. And as usual, let's jam this thing out and hear what it sounds like in a mix.
All right, so that's the Moor 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 uh, 005. This is basically, you know, the, the Eddie Van Halen in a tiny little package pedal. That's it. That's what it sounds like. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video or if you found it at all entertaining or helpful, make sure to hit that like button. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this. Have you used this or any of the other mower, mower pedals before? Are there any other ones that you might suggest? Maybe I should try some more out. I'll try to find some more and do some other reviews and some test stuff. Let me know in the comments if you know anything about that. Also, hey, go ahead and pick yourself up the Nasty Cab. It's 10 bucks. Link in the description. Merch shop, Nasty Cab. Do it. But thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it as always. We'll see you in the next one. Peace! that sound.